So I've got my Space Marines Primaris Captain uh, split up into his sub-assemblies so I can give this a good priming. Um, I don't normally record this step, um, but I just thought I should kind of point out how many sub-assemblies uh, this character, this model needs in order to be painted, you know, primed well. Um, so there's literally only, yeah, there's literally only this thing I can prime together. So this, this base and, oh, and the base topper, they're one thing. Everything else is separate. I mean, so here, for example, I could have left the mummy on the shield, but then I don't get the back part of the shield. I don't get kind of the the, the backs, the shoulders of this uh, mummy. Uh, same issue with the Necron. I could have left it on the base, but then I won't really get to the back side of it. Uh, back side of the of the power pack. Uh, obviously, you know, arms are always going to be disconnected, so I can get at that stuff right there. And this one, it was so close, so close, but. If I'm going to paint the back of the uh, cape, then that has to go. And there's, a, there's some areas back here that I will also need to paint. So there are there's almost no sub-assemblies. It's all each piece is, <clears throat> is going to be primed separately. Um, I, I haven't done a whole lot of characters, and maybe this is part for the course for characters. It's not a complaint necessarily. It's just acknowledgement that some of these are going to be more complex than others, and this is a pretty complex one. So, in order to get the best possible results in painting, then we uh, we do it this way. So, it's priming time. All right, <clears throat> here is my captain. Um, <clears throat> he's the Primaris Captain, it is time to give him a paint job. Now, I'm going to be a bit more adventurous with this guy, um, because I kind of messed him up already. <laughs> so, I, uh, I've been wanting to do some additional posing, and so I thought, you know what, I'm going to go get a, I'm going to get a, a hot air gun, and I'm going to heat up the arm and see if I can twist it over. Uh, I haven't wanted to do it with any models I knew I was going to keep and use, uh, and so this one, I was a little unsure, so I thought, yeah, I'll experiment with them. Not a biggie. And um, so I did manage to bend the uh, the wrist a little bit. So it is now at an angle. It didn't, doesn't normally come in. However, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see. So the detailing didn't really survive. You see his wrist... Thing, that bracer he's got uh, the detailing on that is all kinds of warped and uh, so is some of the sword uh, it's just one of those deals where this is not the kind of model where you can get away with safely melting stuff uh, there might be some other way of kit bashing another weapon on them or, or doing some other stuff but um, when a model is this tight for this kind of scenario uh, I don't recommend uh, <clears throat> uh, doing the plastic melting thing um, it's just not gonna look good maybe in a less detailed model it'll look okay but on a model like this just just keep it the way it is so now that I've well not learned my lesson but I've verified my suspicions because I figured that's what was gonna happen now I can be a bit more adventurous with him he's not gonna look amazing because of that janky arm so now I can do some other cool stuff uh, which means I'm going to take some liberties with the painting here. And what I want to attempt is instead of doing the normal base, you know, the normal black base, uh, I want to, all those armor pieces, I'm not going to do any basing on them. I'm only going to do washing. So it's going to look interesting. So I've discovered this before, kind of by accident. I was painting some other stuff, and when I put the kind of a, a, a diluted black paint 
over the white priming. It looked kind of cool. I don't know what it's going to look like when the whole model is like that and all the metal pieces kind of have that look. Um, but if I was going to ever gonna try it, now's the time. Blame the janky arm. I mean, that I did, but still blame the janky arm. So this might look like garbage at the end of it, and that's okay. I want to experiment and see what it looks like. I'm sure other people have tried. Um, and... Maybe they haven't posted it because it ends up looking like garbage. But let's give it a shot, shall we? Just got to get my wet palette started. I saw someone share this trick on YouTube where you moisten both sides of the parchment paper. To reduce the rolling and kind of get the get the paper ready to be a wet palette. An important part of that step is to get rid of the water droplets because otherwise you get your paint way too diluted. So getting rid of all the excess water. Dab 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 dab. And since I'm going to be using a very dilute paint, I want it to count. So I'm going to use the matte black. It's pretty black. I've been doing this thing um, where I dilute. So I add the paint and onto the wet palette. But then I add just a little bit of water and then I mix it with this uh, little wand thing. It's metal so can you use it over and over and over. Um, and this is a way of kind of diluting my paints just a little bit so they flow better and they don't they're not as sticky um, <clears throat> I used to believe that if I added the paints to the palette um, the palette would do you know its job of adding water to the paints a little bit. Uh, that is apparently not the case. Um, it's something that I've noticed, um, but I recently saw a video on YouTube um, where there was, um, I think it was Squidmar, Squidmar Miniatures. He talked a bit about how to use a wet palette um, and had seen his stuff before, but uh, I paid a bit more attention this time. And he he mentioned uh, that specifically, that you really do want to add water to your paints before you use them uh, on the wet palette, even if they're on the wet palette. So that's a great technique. Uh, that's a good tip, and so I'm going to try to follow that here a bit. So I'm going to add a bit more water because I do want to use the wash a bit. So the idea here is going to be to not be black, but suggest black. Um, I think it might look cool, but I, you know, I don't know for a fact. And this is the kind of thing that you don't really know until you try it. So I'm going to try it. And I'm trying it on this model because he's got so much other stuff going on. There's all these fabrics and stuff. So it's not all armor. So it's going to look intentional. It's not like a, look like another one of my accidents. Um, that's the goal. And so where it's pooling, I'm making sure that it... You know, it pulls where I want it to pull, not where it wants to pull. Because I want the effect to be consistent across the model. And kind of letting gravity do its thing. Which 
which means that if it's going to pull, it needs to pull towards the bottom. And I can control kind of what it looks like a little bit better than it just with basing. This actually might reduce the amount of edge highlighting I have to do. But at the end of the day, I'm not quite sure if it's going to be one of those deals where it's just simply too white to be considered a black armor. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep these black. There's going to be a lot of other colors happening because of all the all the bedazzling he's wearing. So I'll keep it I'll keep it black. And so this is why I'm trying this cuz I like the way it looks when it's just the wash. It's like the hint of black. Um, I hope it. I hope once I'm done, it comes across as uh, black as opposed to uh, gray. But there's that possibility. I'm gonna hit this janky arm that admittedly I janked up, but still. It's unnecessary, was it? Unnecessary. Didn't need to go down like this. It's becoming clear it'll be difficult to maintain consistency uh, because I'm not being exact in my ratios like for water versus paint and as a result some of these parts are gonna be darker than others so you can see here for example the arm looks darker than the shoulder pad um, and both of those look darker than the leg armor so I'm gonna have to play with this a bit. But so far, I'm kind of okay with the results. And it is much faster. I mean, so far, who knows if I'll need to, I mean, I'll probably need to go back over it a couple of times, but, It's a cool look, I think. Right, I'm encountering too much variation with the, I guess the density of the pigments, so I'm going to water down the entire puddle here. Okay, I think that's too dark, so I'm going to hit it with this brush with some water and just kind of dislodge some of that black pigment. should be pretty clear that I'm not sure if this is a glaze or a wash. My understanding is that they're very similar and their only difference is that just the amount of dilution you um, use. I don't know what that threshold is. 
looks like it's a matter of experience. So since I don't have much of that, I'm just going to go with, I'm calling it a wash because that's what I'm used to using. And then if it's actually a glaze, I'll take my lumps. Fair dilute paint is really what I'm chasing after here. Alright, so <clears throat> here's what he looks like so far. Uh, I'll probably give him a couple of different passes. I won't record all that stuff, but I'll get, I'll record some of the other details. But just want to get that base, quote unquote, base coat done correctly. But it looks like I'm on the right track. This might look cool. Well, I'm not too far from done with this Primaris Captain, and he's looking pretty good. Um, I haven't done any edge highlighting on him because the kind of the, the painting with the glaze leaves lots of those highlights kind of naturally there. Uh, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. <clears throat> I have discovered something, <laughs> and that is that I am painting, prior to this model, prior to this experience, I'm painting with paints that are way too thick. <clears throat> Even if I uh, kind of thin them down a little bit, I'm not thinning them down enough. As I've been painting with what I thought were glazes, I've realized that, no, this is not special. This is how you should be painting. Because, I, I mean, it doesn't have the same amount of coverage, but it doesn't hang up at all, and it leaves nice textures behind. The one thing I think I have learned for sure is that I probably don't want to gl try to really uh, thin down the metallic paints. They don't like to be thinned down that much. <clears throat> I mean, they do, but they just leave like a sparkly, same color base. So here's where I'm at. Uh, I'm especially happy with the red because I've had so much trouble with the reds in the past. They get all globby, globby and sticky and they won't d make any coverage and... They just went on beautifully on this guy. So, of course, I can't leave well enough alone. So, he's got a perfectly red cape. Or, I don't know what that's called. It's like a... He's wearing a beach towel with a neck hole in it. Uh, and... I... I could leave it like that. It's table ready. It's fine. But that's kind of not where I want to leave it. I want to do a little... I want to fancy it up a bit. And by fancy it up, I mean I want to try some techniques that I don't know that I that I can do. But, you know, I saw them on the internet. So, uh, in this case, uh, it was... Tink Hold on. So, in this case, I decided I needed to understand how to, how to paint... A red cape aside from just making it red like I wanted to do some washes some glazes to make it look lush and creamy and all that jazz uh, I don't know how to do that myself but there's plenty of people online who will teach us how to do that and so I looked up um, this one video I think it's by Tinky or Tink Tiny or Tinker Miniatures um, and it looks like it's a, a easy enough concept so once you get the base layer down you give it a pass with a dark wash then you go back with uh to kind of do some highlight of the raised areas with the original red color then you go back with a mixture of the red and some, some brighter like orange and so i'm going to give that a shot i've never done this before and i might just mess up this beautiful cape but we don't improve if we don't try new stuff right so that's the next step here. Let's let's make this happen. All 
There's the first kind of layer. That's the black wash on the kind of the recessed parts of the the fabric, that little robe thing. I'm gonna do the same thing back here. Now the person on the web that I, whose tutorial I saw uh, didn't use a black wash. They used Nuln oil, which is you know it's basically the same thing. Um, at least it's largely the same thing, and it's used in much the same way. So, so mine is coming in a little too dark, so I need to thin this out just a little further. And make sure that most of the stuff is going into the crevices. All right, I'm gonna let this dry, and while it dries, I'm gonna stand it up so that gravity does its thing, and I'm gonna finish with the details that are yet to be complete. Okay, he's sufficiently dry for my next pass. This is going to be the pure red, and it's just going to be kind of on all these ridges and flat areas, kind of a generous A generous highlighting of it. Already can tell I'm going to have to do some patchwork there. Hmm. Looks kind of funny, but I'm going to trust the process. I'm going to trust the process. a good time to use the painting handle. One of these days I'm gonna anger this wrong and a model is just gonna fling out following up on Team Rocket. Clearly need to let that dry a bit more. It's running. forgot what I was doing and so I started gluing stuff on there <laughs> so I had to come right off little I'm uh, gonna skip a step here I'm not sure I'm getting the results I like but it's I don't know It's 
robe is done. I think I won't talk too much about what I feel about it. Uh, I just I'm gonna start putting some stuff, gluing some stuff together, and then we can call this one done. Once that's the case, I'll critique my work and go from there. There he is, our captain for our Death Watch army, our, my, whatevs. There's a lot of gold on this dude. The blacks are a little tame, but I'm okay with that. There's a lot of detail in this, but it's not incredibly difficult detail. It's the kind of detail you can get away with if you're lazy like me. But you could splurge on if you're one of those guys that has, you know, they spent 120 bucks on a sable brush that has literally two bristles. And you know, you know go to town on all the detail. Um, oh, you know what? That reminds me, I needed to go back and do something with that hilt. Um, it's a little melty <laughs> from the heat treatment. Uh, you know, once I... Once I decided I wasn't going to be worried about how this guy looked, I felt like I was able to experiment a bit more. Um, so I was able to uh, learn that, yeah, you don't want to take the heat wand to uh, many pieces, probably for something like this. You're going to need to do some kit bashing where you remove a chunk of the arm and reposition it and glue it down some other way. Uh, so, you know, that I'll, I'll try that someday. Um, so the heat wand didn't work. I'll continue to try it for different applications and see if I can get a decent result out of it. Uh, so, I mean, I know other people use it that way, and so it's just a matter of building up some skill. And speaking of skill, um, and things that I hadn't tried before, is this... Uh, ooh. Is this cape blending, I guess is what it's called. I was looking for something else, but I, I get the approach, and I think I understand what's supposed to happen. I just can't quite get it to happen. The front of the cape looks quite a bit better than the back of it. Um, so the idea is to make the fabric or the cloak a bit more dynamic and kind of consistent with the lighting principles. Um... And I, tr you know, I, I tried it. I wasn't, I didn't fail, but I didn't do a great job. So I'm in that sweet spot where, oh, learning is going to happen. Um, I did well enough that I'm going to keep trying this because I think there's a lot of promise. I've seen some absolutely dreamy uh, blends and capes, uh, capes with this blended paint style. Um, and it's not, you know... It's not uh, their fault that I'm clumsy as an ox. Uh, I don't know how clumsy oxes are, but I imagine... I don't know. Um, so, I think part of the problem with with this is that my brush strokes are a little too thick, and they end up looking like, like stripes on a cape, as opposed to gradations of light. But... I have never tried that before, even, you know, way back in the day. Um, so this is a learning experience. I've enjoyed it. Uh, this was a, you know, relatively simple model to paint. There's a lot of detail, but somehow it feels less, I don't know. It didn't feel as, as, it wasn't as difficult or as, I don't know, whatever, as something like this guy. This is a member of my kill team. Uh, he's complete, but it was kind of like a chore. This guy wasn't. And I think part of the issue is that I'm doing batch painting with these. Um, and so, you know, there's one model, even if it's a little bit more complicated, it does. It feels like I'm, you know, it's one and done, and I'm done in a day or two. Here it's ten models, and by the time I've got close to, you know, applying the base coat to all ten of them, it's, you know, it's nighttime. It's time to go to bed. Um, 
And so I end up skimping on the detail. I end up just, ugh, Taylor ready, let's go. Uh, whereas I'm willing to put a little bit more effort and try new things with something like this. Um, it's not the model's fault. It's my fault. It's a matter of motivation, but it is what it is. So there he is. I'm happy to have tried something new, to have learned some things. Um, yeah. Have a good night, everybody. Peace.